Hi, this is Luke with The Gamer, and I'm going to guide you through Chapter 5 of the Resident Evil 4 Remake. Now that you've finally found Ashley, the rest of the Resident Evil 4 Remake is all about getting her out of the village safely. Of course, there's still a bloodthirsty cult on your trail, so it's not going to get any easier. Chapter 5 marks the point in the game where the warm-up period is definitely over. Now you need to backtrack through the village to reach the extraction point, with new threats appearing every step of the way. So use this video to overcome every obstacle and survive the villagers onslaught. When the chapter begins, first of all head back into the room where you found Ashley at the end of the previous chapter. In there you'll find a casket hanging from the roof that you can shoot down and get a treasure from. Then head over to the left of the upstairs area and there'll be a ladder that you can't reach yet, but you can help Ashley climb up there so she can kick the ladder down for you. Once you're up there, go forwards and turn around to the right and then right again and head towards the end of this little passage and you'll find a treasure chest with a gold token inside. Next, you'll need to interact with the window. Leon will jump out and then after a bit of convincing, Ashley will jump out too and Leon will catch her. After that, when you jump down the ladder in front of you, you'll have a brief conversation with Hunnigan that'll stop you from going anywhere just yet. But once that conversation's over, you can move this shelf out of the way and keep moving forwards. It's also worth diving into this room on the right again just to check if you've opened that locked drawer. If you have a small key, you can open it up and find a yellow diamond inside. And now we need to move forwards, backtracking towards the village. There'll be one villager out there on their own that you can probably stealth kill, but a couple more will come in through the gate in front of you and... While it is possible to stealth this section, I am very bad at stealth and I quickly got spotted and had to fight them all off. So if you end up in this situation like me, also keep an eye on the church because some more enemies will come out of there. And also keep an eye out for any villagers that ignore you and go after Ashley. They'll lift her up and try to escape with her. But all it takes is a single shot against that villager to make them drop Ashley. You'll always know when a villager's trying to abduct Ashley because you'll hear her scream incredibly loudly, just like this. It's also worth mentioning there is a treasure to the left of the entrance to the church that I forgot to mention in previous videos. There's a red gemstone ring in there if you want to grab it. Either way, once you've cleared out all the enemies, proceed through the graveyard back towards the main village. Whether you've stealthed it or killed everyone won't matter here because there will be an enemy at the bottom. And to be honest, the only reason I'm showing this is I just want to show you the really cool parry I landed that deflected his molotov back at him, and then I got to watch him burn to death. You'll find the merchant is still there just outside the main hall if you've got anything to sell and he'll have a few new items, namely some recipes and a case size upgrade. There'll also be a new request to the side of the town hall entrance to kill a big dog, which is something we'll get onto in a bit. When you head into the town hall, there's another treasure in here that I also forgot to mention earlier. Just look up and you'll find a casket hanging from the roof, and when you go to collect it, you'll find a nice lovely velvet blue for yourself. Make sure to do a sweep of the town hall for anything you missed the first time you pass through here. Let's head back to the village. The ruins of the tower are still blocking your way so you'll have to go to your left and unfortunately there's a villager there that's kind of hard to slip past. In my case I couldn't find a stealthy way to kill him and had to face him head on. So once you take him out and proceed through the village, you'll also find there's a lot more enemies in the village again. While thankfully this won't be as intense as the original village fight, don't take it lightly as there's quite a few of them waiting for you. So protect Ashley and clear out all of these villagers. After the villagers are cleared out, we're going to head to that barn that we've been previously unable to access. If you head around the side, there's a spot where you can help Ashley climb inside of it, and then she'll go around and unlock the door for you. Inside you'll find a treasure chest, and inside you can get an elegant bangle. There's also a casket hanging from the roof that you can shoot down, which has a silver token inside of it. And now for this next part, it's actually optional. You don't need to head back to the village chief's manor. But if you want to get some more treasure and fight the big dog from that request we just picked up, then you'll need to do this. Otherwise you can just skip it and head straight onto the farm. So if you fancy getting a bit of treasure and having to fight a really big dog, then we need to head back to the village chief's house. This is where chapter 2 ends. If you remember when you went into the village chief's bedroom and found that lever behind a painting that opened up a hole in the roof, now you have Ashley, you can get up there. So lift her up and she'll kick the ladder down for you. And when you first climb up the ladder, there should be a yellow herb on your right. So pick that up and you can extend your maximum health with it. If you look around, you'll find plenty of books and photos that give a bit more backstory on the village and its history. And then look for this small crawl space at the back of the room. 
There's another book, but in the corner, there's an antique camera, which is a treasure that can be sold to the merchant. After you're done in the attic, start heading back towards the village. You might notice that very big dog behind the gate, but he won't attack you just yet, he'll run off. So continue towards the village, and as you get there, he'll finally pop out to say hello. Now this dog isn't like the other ones you've fought before, he is way more dangerous and can take a lot more damage. So keep your distance and aim your shots and eventually you'll take him down. He'll also drop you a nice little gemstone once you defeat him, and the request will be completed. Now we're going to head back through the farm area that we went through in chapter 1. There'll be some more enemies in this area including a brute, so fight carefully and keep Ashley safe as you try and take all these guys down. After you've cleared them out, don't forget to check this box over to the left of the barn. Now we have the old way shrine key, you can open this up and you'll find an antique pipe. Before you run straight across the bridge, the merchant will have set up a shop underneath the portcullis controls. So make sure to go around and give him a visit and heed his advice. Might want to take care of any leftover errands before going this way. Be ashamed to live the rest of your life wondering, what if? Am I right? So if you're sure you're done with the village area, then it's time to move on. Cross the bridge and a cutscene will trigger. Hey, over here! When you cross the bridge past the windmill, Leon and Ashley will take refuge inside a building with Luis. What follows is a long horde battle. Ashley is safely hidden and you don't need to worry about Luis either, so just focus on yourself. The top floor may be the safest place as it serves as a bottleneck, but staying on the first floor with Luis allows him to occasionally supply you with ammo from time to time. So as soon as the siege begins, rush through the house and gather all the supplies you can. Then push the bookcase near the bottom of the stairs to block a window and board up the rest of the window with planks on the table. As you fight off the hordes of villagers, some will also drop more boards, so grab them and block up a window as soon as possible. After a few minutes, or if you block off all the windows, the Ganados will use ladders to get up to the second floor, forcing you and Luis to head up there. A few minutes after that, a brute will enter the building and start attacking you. Once you take the brute down, a cutscene will trigger and the chapter will come to an end. So that's a guide to the 5th chapter of the Resident Evil 4 remake. If you think I've missed anything out then leave it in the comments below and check out thegamer.com for more.